it's not often that you get a truly all new Corvette. In fact, the last time a Corvette was really all new was in 1997 and I was a junior in high school. And while Corvettes have always been a car of compromise, sure, good on paper, but never quite in pace with the Europeans, they've got something to look out for because now there really is an all new one. When we say all new, we truly mean it from the ground on up. The chassis itself is aluminum, bonded and welded, and is 50% stiffer and 100 pounds lighter than the C6. The new body is stunning and as slippery as they come, now integrating cooling ducts into the exterior in a way normally reserved for top tier exotics and race cars. Sitting in this car, it's an immediate difference. Now, let's not waste anyone's time here. Let's just cut straight to the chase and uh, let's just make sure that it does. Yes, okay, it can light the tires up without any trouble whatsoever. Just to make sure, let's do a few more. Because you all know you would too, I had to do a few more. That's the good news. And the reason it can do that is because under the hood is an all new engine, it's the LT1. The new LT1 engine is completely unrelated to the old LT1 from the C4. It's the same 6.2 liters of displacement as the LS3 and still uses push rods, but that's where the similarities end. It's now direct injected and features variable cam timing and cylinder deactivation. Fortunately, the Eco Toys haven't hurt the engine's strength and it now makes 460 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. Those of you who are Corvette geeks will realize that that is actually more low-end torque than the 7-liter LS7 found in the previous generation Z06. Let's see how she do. Oh, yes. Very nice. I love the power because smooth, even, very predictable. You know, it's not, it's not peaky, there's no valleys, there's tons of low end torque, and it continues right up to the red line. It sounds a lot like the Grand Sport, but there's a little more intake noise coming from up front. And Sending power rearwards is the controversial 7-speed manual gearbox by Tremec, which incorporates auto rev matching function for both upshifts and downshifts. It's got a great shifter, really good action, not too short, not too stiff. I'm talking about shifters here. And the question you're probably asking, is seven speeds too many? My one gripe with this car is that yes, seven speeds are too many. Not in theory, because it helps with fuel economy, but in practice. For instance, I'm in fourth gear right now, if I want to go to fifth, I have to be very careful to actually get it into fifth. If I'm trying to shift too fast, I could very easily end up in seventh. On the other hand, it does have, by flicking this paddle here, it engages auto rev matching. Perfect auto rev match every time. Perfect auto rev match every time. Would I use it for myself? Not so much, but if you're stuck in traffic, it's a nice thing to have. Or if you're not particularly confident, with your heel towing skills, you know, on the racetrack, it'll keep you safe, keep you from upsetting the car by not operating the clutch properly or not knowing how to heel tow. The best value in cars today is the Z51 package for this car. It's 2,800 bucks. You get bigger wheels, bigger brakes, completely revised aerodynamics, you get a dry sump oil system, 2800 bucks. It's amazing. It wouldn't be an all new Corvette if the numbers weren't staggeringly good, and the C7 doesn't disappoint there either. 0 to 60, 3.8 seconds. Quarter mile, 12 seconds. Top speed, 180 plus. 29 miles per gallon on the highway. There is no car you can buy that makes this much horsepower, goes this fast, and gets that kind of fuel economy. It's because it's slippery. Let's talk functional downforce. There's a bunch of it. 
They have managed the airflow so well around this car. Everything they've learned from racing Corvettes, computational fluid dynamics, and real world testing. And this is one of the most efficient sports car shapes in the world. Air goes in the big front air dam, comes out through the extractor, and in between goes through a forward tilting radiator like they use in the C6R race car. Better cooling. The air comes around the windshield and into the side NACA ducts above the rear wheels. Now, you think this might be brake ducts, but it's actually for cooling the uh, transmission as well as the oil cooler. Then the air is extracted through the rear transom of the car, just passing right through the body rather than around it like my car. But the biggest revelation has got to be the interior. Because honestly, you know, a Corvette is always fast. It's always been fast. It's always going to be fast. Well, except in the early 80s, but recently. The interior, it's all, it's the materials. It's the workmanship. I just drove the Jaguar F-Type, and we're right in the same wheelhouse here with this car. And everything is leather, real aluminum, real dry carbon fiber. These switches feel like they belong in a $60,000 car. There's three USB ports, two 12-volt ports. Everywhere I look, I'm, it feels like a premium package. It doesn't, especially when you hit the go pedal. <laughs> You've got two 8-inch screens, one here, one in the gauge pod. The, the gauge pod one switches around depending on what mode you're in. In track mode, it looks more like a race car. In touring mode, it shows more of the information you want when you're on a road trip, fuel economy, temperatures, that kind of stuff. The changes aren't just playing catch up on features with the Europeans either. The C7 gets cool bits of new tech you can't get anywhere else at any price. It even has an amazing new technology that senses when the tires are properly warmed up. This is a system that works with the traction and stability control, senses when the tires are up to temperature, and allows you to drive at the tire's limit for its temperature. It's helped them actually shave three feet off their 60 to zero braking time, and get better acceleration numbers and better handling numbers too. It's really incredible. The VET is one of those cars, it's got to be everything, right? It's got to be a daily driver, it's got to be an all-star when you get to the track, it's got to be a grand tourer, it's got to be a luxury car. And for the first time ever, I really think they've actually accomplished it. What I love most about the C7 is that it's finally a Corvette without excuses. It's not like, oh, well, it's 50 grand, so it doesn't need to have this, or it's 50 grand, so the dash can be made of plastic, or it's got 400 horsepower, so it's okay if the seats are crappy. Uh, old people buy it, so it's okay if the seats are crappy. I will never, and I say never, complain about Corvette seats again, because these seats are wonderful. These are the touring seats. They're gonna have a sports seat later, but these seats are absolutely brilliant, comfortable for a road trip, good headrest, plenty of lateral bolstering, and the aggressive seats coming later are gonna have even more. I've got cooled seats. I've got cooled seats in a Corvette right now. From the luxury, the technology, the performance, the value, it has all come together in a package that, to me, really feels like it was built by someone who cares. Usually when I drive a GM car, it'll be okay, and then I'll get to one thing, and it'll be like, ugh, what did they do there? Why, why, how did that get through? With the Corvette, honestly, there's none of that. It feels like such a well-engineered, well-sorted, well-developed package and the accountants didn't win. The engineers and the designers went to the accountants and they said, hey, 
You give us that money because it's time that we make this car a world-class car, not just world-class performance. And here it is. And it's amazing. And it may sound like I'm rambling, but there's really a lot here to talk about. Everything is new. The last time there was an all-new Corvette, I was in high school. Now there's a new Corvette. Here I am driving it for a living. How crazy is that? Whoa, F40. <laughs> Driving around in Monterey is always a treat. You see the most wonderful of whips. And the car is so good, I, I almost can't believe it. I almost don't want to believe it. It's light, it's 3,250 pounds. It's balanced. It's actually got a slight rear weight bias with a full tank of fuel. It's got a super advanced traction control system that it's very easy. Look, off. Super advanced traction control system, off. Brilliant. It's hard to find a car today that doesn't at least in a little bit, get in the way of the driver. You know, this car, you can configure it the way you want, but then when you get in it and drive it, it's extremely analog. Oh, whipping! Okay, maybe I shouldn't go to jail today. But that was a big number. It really does make you want to go out and just hoon the shit out of it, doesn't it? Fucking thing. <laughs> car feels know, crappy. My car feels like a shitbox now after driving a C7. That's the conclusion of the video. We go back to the intro at the conclusion of the video where I get back in my car to set it up for this shot and come to the conclusion that damn, there was before and then there's after in terms of Corvette and my, mine is certainly the before and not the after. Good, just, which is, I hope so, because this is the outro to the video. This is the conclusion. You're looking at now, sir. And, and my wrong. car is, 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 the, is fast, but it's, God, it's a lot more plastic than the new ones. <laughs> 15 years goes a long way, people. American cars can be nice, especially this one. Hey man, thanks for letting us by. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna wave this guy around. I'm gonna rip a huge burnout right here, okay? <laughs> Three, two, one.